Hello and welcome back to another tutorial of how to model your home in 3D. This is a re-upload so if you've done the window tutorial you realize that you kind of just have to do it again. Sorry for that because I found new reference pictures of the Clementi Pix PTO and the unit that we are modeling is similar to this one over here and as you can see the living room window is the same one that we modeled in the deleted tutorial but the room windows are not. So we're just gonna redo this whole tutorial again for people who hasn't started on it yet. But before I begin, I would just like to bring your attention to this tutorial on how to move around in 3D. This is in the Blender Basics playlist. So please watch this one before you continue on because I've actually consolidated some of the basic movement techniques inside this tutorial. So I will not be going through them anymore in future tutorials just to make sure that we have a shorter video from now on. Okay, so let's begin by adding some cubes and we're just going to use these cubes to be our measuring guide. So in the Z dimension, we're just going to add one at 0.56 meters because uh, based on my research, uh, the average BTO floor to window height is actually 0.656 meters. And we're just going to duplicate this for the top one and it's going to be 0 0.35 meters so we're just going to bring this cube and snap it to the ceiling here sometimes you just have to bring it down re snap it like this and we're just going to select these two guys bring it to the side uh, we're going to use them as a guides later so we're just going to leave them here for now the next step we are going to create another cube and this cube will be there to help us cut a hole in the wall so we're just going to bring it roughly around here just gonna jump in straight into top view bring it into the x-ray mode press tab and we're just gonna bring the sides to our 2d drawing make sure it lines up with the connection wall for the windows all right I'm happy with that just gonna select the entire top area of the cube and in the Z axis locked we're just gonna snap it to this cube over here snap it this way and if you haven't seen the basics tutorial the basics tutorial basically tells you how to do all these things okay so let's just select this guy and duplicate bring this over here going to top view in x-ray mode again just gonna bring this one here going to edit mode bring our lines as close as we can over here well, we're going to be slightly off always, but uh, we try our best. Alright, so same thing here. This should be aligned already because uh, I've already snapped it accordingly. So let's just snap it again just to make sure. Okay, so this one is a bit tricky because as you know uh, from our reference photo that this window for the room actually doesn't go all the way down here and luckily for you i have the rough measurements for this so we're just going to create another measuring cube here and in the z we're just going to type 1.05 meters and we're just going to bring this guy here and we're going to lock it in the z axis and snap it to the floor so we know how much this box is supposed to go up. So I'm going to go into the X-ray edit mode and bring this guy up here and snap it to this measurement box here, as you can see. All right. So actually we are done with this guy now. We can delete this measurement cube and we'll just keep this ones here for now, but we're just going to duplicate this guy across here. And we're just going to make sure in x-ray mode, we try and align it as close as we can. Uh, there will be some offset, of course. All right. Just duplicate this one again here. Just uh, make sure they are sort of aligned. All right. That's, this is what we want. And we're just going to select all these cubes by shift selecting these cubes and we're going to press ctrl a 
and apply all transforms. So this will basically make all the scales zero out all the extra rotations that we don't want. And we're going to do the same thing for this perimeter as well, just in case as a sanity check, apply all transforms. Now we're just going to select all these cubes, which we're using to cut and we can press M and press new collection. And we're going to type this in as Boolean. You can press OK and you should be able to see that this new group has been created with all these cubes inside. You can turn it on and off to see it. And what's going to happen now, we're going to turn this eye off right now to hide it for now. And we're going to select this perimeter and we're going to go down over here in this tab at modifier tab. And we're going to go to Boolean, add a Boolean modifier. And we're going to change this type to collection. And we're going to select this collection as Boolean. And as you can see, it has used the Boolean cubes that we created to actually cut a hole in the wall. So that's how you cut holes in the walls. Just to be clear, this is just one way of creating holes in walls. The dirtiest and quickest way is actually the Boolean trick that we just did, but it's not going to work in all circumstances. So just to be clear, this is just one way. There are many other ways and I'll be showing you some other ways in the next few hole in the wall cutouts. So let's, let's just continue creating the windows. Shift A, I'm going to create a plane. I'm just going to rotate this by 90 degrees in the X axis by pressing R, X and typing in 90. And what's going to happen now, I'm just going to scale this down here. As you can see, I'm just going to scale it down. I'm going to press tab. I'm going to bring this to snap to the windows. I'm going to snap it to this vertex here. I'm just going to Make sure these two guys selected, bring it in here, snapping these guys here, make sure I get the full window coverage and we're going to start adding edge loops. So I'm just going to bring on my reference images again. All right. So as you can see here, there's these top and bottom panels and it's divided into four separate segments. So we're just going to do an edge loop by control R. And we're going to add one here and we're just going to add one more here and I'm just going to go into the side view and bring up this guy a bit. Maybe this one can be a bit higher. All right. And I'm going to do an edge loop, a vertical edge loop, control R and I'm going to roll my scroll, scroll wheel up twice. Make sure there are four segments and I'm just going to left mouse button down and right mouse button, create this guys. Then I'm going to face mode by pressing three and I'm just going to select all of these faces by pressing a, and I'm just going to press I for an inset. And as you can see, it's uh, doing the in set this way but we want it on each different faces so i'm going to press i again and this is what you get so i'm going to hold down shift to get a better control of this scaling and once i'm happy with this i'm just going to press down the left mouse button to confirm it and this is what we have right so we're going to do the same thing over here uh, on this one so i'm just going to go shift a create a plane Bring this guy here, rotate it in the X axis again. And I'm just going to bring this up, scale it down. And if you happen to scale your plane and it doesn't scale it this way, make sure you press the keyboard period key and select median point. This will actually help you scale from the median point of your selected object. And I'm going to go into tab in vertex mode just going to bring this up here in the Z axis and snap it to this vertex here and bring this one here. Sometimes it's easier to work in X-ray mode. So that's why I'm doing this in X-ray mode. All right. And I'm just going to bring this in 
in the object mode. All right, so I have this now, and what do we have here? We have three panels, and one of them has this weird uh, three window panels at this at the side. So we're just gonna create the vertical ones first. So I'm going to tap, and we're just gonna go Control R vertically, not horizontally. We're just gonna roll the scroll wheel mouse up once and confirm it by pressing the left mouse button and right mouse button. All right, so next step, we're just gonna select all of these faces, press I for the inset, and we should be able to get this. All right, so this is a rough estimate of the window grill. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna use this selection for now. And the next step here, this guy here, I'm just going to go R vertically and roll my scroll wheel mouse button twice to get this and select it. And I'm just going to select this three faces here and press I again to insert it to make sure I get the small, the individual uh, window panels here, which is what we have in this area right here. Okay, so I'm just going to select these faces and delete these guys by delete faces. Alright, so this guy is done. We're just going to select the main window here. I'm going to go into tab and select all these faces that we don't want anymore. I'm going to press X and delete faces. So what's going to happen now, we're just going to go and make sure we zero out everything again. So we're gonna press Ctrl A, apply all transforms, and we're gonna add a new modifier called the Solidify modifier to give it some thickness. So we're just gonna give it some thickness like this. And we're just gonna move it in inside the house. And we're just gonna have to eyeball this one so I'm going to move this guy all the way in by snapping to this vertex here. And then for the outside, I'm just going to adjust this thickness so that it sort of matches it. Doesn't really matter too much. So the same thing we're going to do it here. So we're going to select this guy now. Control A, apply all transforms to make sure the modifiers work correctly. Add a solidify modifier bring up the thickness and we're just gonna move this guy in snap it then we're just gonna adjust the thickness by eye so I'm pretty happy with what we have here and the next step is to select this guy and duplicate it shift D snapping it to the next one duplicating it again snapping it here bring it here all right so yeah, basically this is what we have right now. Pretty happy with it. Let's delete this measurement cubes as we do not need them anymore. Great. So for now, we are just going to live with this uh, according to our reference photos. This is actually quite similar to our reference right now. So I'm pretty happy with what we have. And we're just going to leave this as it is for now because we could always add more details by, you know, modeling the window panes, but uh, let's do that much later. Uh, the important thing is that we have the windows cut out so that light can actually shine into the house. So we're just going to leave this as it is for now. going to go into file, save as, and we're going to save this as a version 3. Let's now jump quickly to our kitchen window and this method we're just going to use a different method to cut a hole in the window so i'm going to select this uh perimeter wall and going into the edit mode by pressing tab we're going to add edge loops around here and deleting the face to cut a hole but first we're just going to create measurement cubes again cube one gonna press g and hold down control to snap it this here Bring down the size, press G, snap it here again. And we're going to adjust the Z transform to 0 0.3 meters. 
and this is the ceiling to the window height just going to duplicate this one and this one will be 1.05 meters this is the floor to the window height so i'm going to snap it here and what's going to happen now i'm just going to select this outer perimeter wall and press the tab key to go into the edit mode and we're going to create edge loops Control r horizontal ones and we're going to snap it to our we're going to create two of them and snap it to our cubes here measurement cubes all right so this is done and we're going to jump out to object mode and delete these two measurement cubes all right so let's go into edit mode back again so what's going to happen now i'm just going to select this face by pressing three into face mode selecting this two face and press delete faces and there you go this is another way of cutting holes in the walls but as you can see when we cut a hole in the wall we can actually see inside the wall and into the other wall which which is not what we want so you want to select these two edges and fill it up so how do we do that we go into edge mode by pressing 2 as you can see here in the edit mode we are in this mode here which is the edge select mode gonna select this edge and this edge and press F to fill so same thing goes here these two edges you gotta be really careful of which edge you select sometimes if there's a hidden edge selected behind you know you could actually fill up the wrong edge and everything will look wrong so just be very careful when you do this kind of stuff all right so this is done going to go outside and our window for the kitchen is done so if you're not aware uh, for your service yard window uh, this is actually what hdb gives you there's actually no built-in window it's just an empty space so if you want to build your own windows that's at your own cost but it doesn't come with it okay so now we are left with two windows which we haven't really gone into yet which is the bathroom windows and we will eventually get there when i get more information on how these windows will look like but in the next tutorial we'll be actually cleaning up this mesh making every making sure everything sort of uh, sticks and we're going to close up some gaps in the walls here and there so stay tuned for the next one and thank you for sticking through this one